In this video, we're going to cover version management and some of the advanced things you can do to replicate versions. So we're going to go into a course, you know, Hockey 100 here. We're going to go to version list. You see you have a bunch of different settings here. So we can change the state. Now, state has implications in terms of how you plan on using it in the future and how you plan on integrating it into your workflows at a later point in time. But you can see everything starts in development. We have master, active, and promotional, which will just kind of bounce it around as to where you can then filter and say, you know, internally no, oh, well, this is marketing type of materials. We're going to put this as promo versus this is being actively offered to students versus this is for internal purposes, but it's a master because this was maybe the first time we created this course so that you can create things off of it. Uh, most of these are just for internal purposes of keeping track of things. But let's see what implications they have. So we're going to click edit, we can actually change some of the section information and we'll see how that influences things such as active. So we're going to move this to an active state. We're going to say it's for this coming year and it's section 100. We're going to do it immediately and this is an OER section at the time. You see what happens is this changes the path to something that's consistent with our naming convention that we put in place here. So we have active, the date, and then the section. You also notice this is now marked blue for active offering. Now if I go back to that course, Hockey 100, we can go to these different pages you see we haven't implemented that showing up there, but you could make it show up in one of those different lists depending on the state it's in. But let's go to version list and you'll see it's now active and has the section details there. We can also change that. You'll see because now it's active, it could be moved to archive. So once the semester is over, you can move this to an archive state and again, do with it what you want from your internal workflows. We're going to move this back to a development state. And so moving it back to a development state, you'll see the name changes back to sandbox. We can then go and change it again. And we'll move it to a master this time to see what impact that has. So now it's gold and it says master. And 229 is just the internal you know, node reference value as to how to directly get to this area. Uh, for master, you can only move things back to a sandbox state. So try to put in a reasonably lightweight workflow uh, for moving content around between different states. Now let's get into replicating content. So we'll go to back to the overview page. We're going to go to Hockey 100 and then we're going to go back to version list. And you see we have edit, duplicate, and delete. So you can delete this entire version. I'm not going to do that. I might get very upset. <laughs> but we have duplicate. So let's see how duplicate works. And so Duplicate gives you some cloning options. You can clone all the content associated to these features. Uh, by default, it's just set to clone everything. Um, and then you can actually change the name of this to uh, Offered to Students, we'll say is the name of this one. Uh, you can change some of the section info, which it will set it to whatever the previous one was. You know, we're going to take out section, and we're going to take that out, and we're just going to mark this as active, although we could move it to you know, fall or spring. Maybe we'll say it's spring of 13-14. Say we have this, uh, this, we call this Prof. Brian. So this is my course that I'm going to run. We have the features in place. We're just saying, hey, copy everything. And now we're going to clone this. And this is going to run a job. It goes through takes all of the content that was created and dynamically re-references and recreates all of it. So now you'll see I have a different address. Um, these node identifiers, if you've been paying attention, are much higher now because it actually went and created a lot of content. Uh, I can go into the content outline and you'll see that the entire outline is there, but this is in a different location now. Uh, so let's say this is my specific way of handling this course and I have requirements unlike anyone else. I want to go in, I need to have a theme that looks different from everyone else teaching this course. So let's go with uh, Art 100 as an example. Or actually, you know, we'll do Theater 107. So we'll apply these theme settings. And you'll 
you'll see now it looks like theater one and seven. Um, you can swap out the site logo, which changes this to you know, whatever you want. Um, but let's change in the settings. Let's take out that logo. So it should just remove the little banner name there. Okay, so now it's much more generic. Um, let's go back to our intro. You'll see all of this stuff is still in place. The content still generally looks the same. Uh, all of this information is over here. Now, to showcase this is actually different, let's go back to my profile. We'll see we have initial creation. We also have this thing called Prof Brian. Uh, let's go back to System Home. We're going to go to Hockey 101. And we're going to go to Version List. And you'll see we still have these as two discreetly different things. I can go back to initial creation now. And initial creation holds on to the settings and content specific to initial creation while allowing me to branch and work independently of it. 